Hi, welcome to Jesus for All 2, God's Word, Your Daily Bread, for September 12th, 2022. Here you will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, with the goal of hearing all of the Bible by the end of December 2022, as well as increasing your faith. Because the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And the Lord Jesus himself in the book of Luke chapter 11 verse 28 said, But he said more than that, Blessed are those who hear the word of God, and keep it. Amen. We know that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He, verse 2, was in the beginning with God. We know that all things were made by Him, made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Verse 5, And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. That was the true light, which lights, gives light to every man coming into the world. And verse 12, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. Verse 14, And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that everlasting life was given to us by our Lord and Savior's work, as described in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you are healed. You were healed. You were healed over 2,000 years ago. Now that you are healed, you were healed. So you were healed, you were healed, you were healed. Now that you're being healed, you were already healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the book of John, chapter 6, verse 63, reads, It is the Spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. And John 4, 24 lets us know that God is a spirit. And those, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The time that we are living in now is the time of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit is that spirit prayed for is the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, the Helper, the Advocate, the Counselor. As described in John 14, 16, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another Helper, that he may abide with you forever. Verse 17, The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you, and will be in you. And that is the Holy Spirit who lives, dwells with us and in us, and is described in 1 John 4, 1 John 4, verse 4. And it reads, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And that he is the Holy Spirit, amen, who will lead and guide us. John 15, 26, But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. That me being Jesus Christ, he will remind you of the commandments of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and he will give us the strength to abide by those commandments in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And so today, the September 12th, the words of life that we shall hear will be from Psalm 58, Proverb 12. The New Testament reading will be from 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 through 
16, and the Old Testament reading will be from the book of Isaiah, chapter 39, verse 1 through chapter 40, verse 31. All scriptures are taken from the New King James Version of the Bible, copyright 1982 by Thomas Nelson, incorporated, used by permission. And now Psalm 58, a Psalm of David, and it reads, do you indeed speak righteousness, you silent ones? Do you judge uprightly, you sons of men? No, in heart you work wickedness. You weigh out the violence of your hands in the earth. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf cobra that stops its ear, which will not heed the voice of its charmers, charming ever so skillfully. Break their teeth in their mouth, O God. Break out the fangs of the young lions, O Lord. Verse 7, let them flow away as waters which run continually. When he bends his bow, let his arrows be as if cut in pieces. Let them be like snails, like a snail, which melts away as it goes, like a stillborn child of a woman, that they may not see the sun. Verse 9. Before your pots can feel the burning thorns, he shall take them away as with a whirlwind, as in his living and burning wrath. The righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Verse 11 and last. So that men will say, surely there is a reward for the righteous. Surely he is God who judges the earth. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. And I pray that every hearer is also blessed in the hearing. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. And now, Proverb 12. And it reads, Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. A good man obtains favor from the Lord, but a man of wicked intentions he will condemn. A man is not established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous cannot be moved. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who causes shame is like the rottenness in his bones. Verse 5, the thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceitful. The words of the wicked are lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright will deliver them. Verse 7, the wicked are overthrown and are no more, but the house of the righteous will stand. A man will be commended according to his wisdom, but he who is of a perverse heart will be despised. Better is the one who is slighted, but has a servant, than he who honors himself but lacks bread. A righteous man regards the life of his animal, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. He who tills his land will be satisfied with bread, but he who follows frivolity is devoid of understanding. Verse 12, the wicked covet the catch of the evil man, but the root of the righteous yields fruit. Verse 13, the wicked is ensnared by the transgression of his lips, but the righteous will come through trouble. A man will be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hands will be rendered to him. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. A fool's wrath is known at once, but a prudent man covers shame. Verse 17, he who speaks truth declares righteousness, but a false witness deceit. There is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. The truthful lip shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil, but counselors of peace have joy. No grave trouble will overtake the righteous, but the wicked shall be filled with evil. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal truthfully are his delight. A prudent man conceals knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaims foolishness. The hand of the diligent will rule but the lazy man will be put to forced labor. Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. The righteous shall choose his friends carefully, for the way of the wicked leads them astray. 
Verse 27, the lazy man does not roast what he took in the hunting, but diligence is man's precious possession. Verse 28 in the last, in the way of righteousness is life, and in its pathway there is no death. Amen, amen, and amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And may we pay close attention to verse 26, which reads, The righteous should choose his friends carefully, for the way of the wicked leads them astray. It doesn't say that it may. It says that it leads them astray. And we know that our Heavenly Father sent this word that we would be wise in this life and not fall in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For the Holy Spirit who lives within us will bring this word back to our, our attention. And may we heed when it comes in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen in Jesus' name. And now the New Testament reading for today from the book of 2 Corinthians. Today, continuing with chapter Seven. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter seven. And it reads Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Open your hearts to us. We have wronged no one. We have corrupted no one. We have cheated no one. I do not say this to condemn, for I have said before that you are in our hearts to die together and to live together. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my boasting on your behalf. I am filled with comfort. I am exceedingly joyful in all our tribulation. Verse 5, for indeed, when we came to Macedonia, our bodies had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Outside were conflicts, inside were fears. Nevertheless, God, who com for comforts the downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus. Verse 7, and not only by his coming, but also by the consolation with which he also comforted in you when he told us of your earnest desire, your mourning, your zeal for me, so that I rejoiced even more. For even if I made you sorry with my letter, I do not regret it, though I did regret it, for I perceive that the same epistle made you sorry, though only for a little while. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance, for you were made sorry in a godly manner, that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. Verse 10, for godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. For observe this very thing, that you sorrowed in a godly manner, what diligence is produced in you, what clearing of yourselves, what indignation, what fear, what vehement desire, what zeal, what vindication. In all things you proved yourselves to be clear in this matter. Verse 12, therefore, although I wrote to you, I did not do it for the sake of him who had done the wrong, nor for the sake of him who suffered wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear to you. Verse 13, therefore, we have been comforted in your comfort, and we rejoiced exceedingly more for the joy of Titus, because his spirit has been refreshed by your will, by you all. For if in anything I have boasted to him about you, I am not ashamed. But as we spoke all things to you in truth, even so our boasting to Titus was found true. Verse 15, And his affections are greater for you as he remembers the obedience of you all, how with fear and trembling you received him. Verse 16 and last, Therefore I rejoice that I have confidence in you in everything. Amen, amen, and amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. Hallelujah and glory to God in the highest. And now the Old Testament reading 
from the book of Isaiah, chapter 39. The book of Isaiah, chapter 39. And it reads, At that time, Merodach Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he heard that he had been sick and had recovered. And Hezekiah was pleased with them and showed them the house of his treasures, the silver, the gold, the spices and precious ointment, and all its armory, all that was found among his treasures. There was nothing in his house or in all his dominion that Hezekiah did not show them. Verse 3, Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and said to him, What did these men say, and from where did they come to you? So Hezekiah said, They came to me from a far country, from Babylon. And he said, What have you seen? What have they seen in your house? So Hezekiah answered, They have seen all that is in my house. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and what your fathers have accumulated until this day will be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. And they shall take away some of your sons who will descend from you whom you will beget, and they shall be Enoch's in the palace of the king of Babylon. Verse 8, then last. So Hezekiah said to Isaiah, The word of the Lord which you have spoken is good, for he said, At least there will be peace and truth in my days. Chapter 40 Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her inequity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Verse 6, the voice said, cry out, and he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. Verse 7, the grass withers, the flower fades, because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Verse 9, O Zion, you who bring good tidings, get up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem. You who bring good tidings, lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God shall come with a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead them who are with young. Verse 12. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, measured heaven with a span, and calculated the dust of the earth in a measure, weighed the mountains in scales, and the hills in a balance? Who has directed the Spirit of the Lord, or, or as his counselor, has taught him? Verse 14. With whom did he take counsel, and who instructed him? and taught him in the path of justice, who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding. Verse 15, Behold, the nations are as a drop in a bucket, and are counted as the small dust on the scales. Look, he lifts up the isles as a very little thing, and Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor its beast sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted by him less than nothing and worthless. Verse 18, to whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness will you compare to him? The workman molds an image, the goldsmith overspreads it with gold, and the silversmith casts silver chains. Whoever is too impoverished for such a contribution chooses a tree that will not rot. 
He seeks for himself a skillful workman to prepare a carved image that will not totter. Verse 21. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood that the foundations of the earth, from the foundations of the earth, verse 22, it is he who sits on the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. He brings the princes to nothing, he makes the judges of the earth useless. Verse 24, scarcely shall they be planted, scarcely shall they be sown, scarcely shall their stock take root in the earth, when he will also blow on them, and they will wither, and the whirlwind will take them away like stubble. Verse 25, to whom then will you liken me, or to whom shall I be equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on the high, and see who has created these things. Who brings out their hosts by number? Who calls them all by name? By the greatness of his might and the strength of his power, no, not one is missing. Verse 27. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is past. Verse 28, have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. Verse 30, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Verse 31 and last, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen, amen, and amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. Blessed, as is I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, is every hearer. Thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, for granting unto us your children, the hearers of your word, who come before you in faith, believing that you are the only begotten Son of the Heavenly Father, who came and redeemed us from our sins by your own blood. Thank you, Father, for letting us mount up with wings like eagles, running and not be weary, the grace to walk and not faint in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, let it be our portion in this land of the living. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Father, and we thank you. Word of God, according to Psalm 107, verse 20, for sending your word and healing us, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Thank you for sending your word and healing us and delivering us from our destructions. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen.